Welcome to the AUV Academic Podcast. I'm Dr. Russell Freeman. I'm a professor of health science and philosophy at American University in Vietnam. And today, we are continuing our closer look at the art of successful meetings. This is part two of our three-part episode with our guest, Professor Jim Huey. Jim, how's it going? It's going good. I'm glad we have this great topic. Me too. We had a really interesting first part, and I'm enjoying listening to your experience, especially with Boeing Aerospace, because I know that you had uh, a lot of experience both attending and organizing meetings. And in our last episode, I asked you about your best and worst experiences, which is always my favorite part of an episode. So I'd like to know, can you give me some examples of a terrible meeting that you went to and a great meeting that you went to and why they were each one of those? Well, I think um, most terrible meetings are one that either they don't have an agenda or they get off agenda and then they drag on and on with no clear objective in mind. That to me is a terrible meeting. And uh, on the opposite side, a good meeting is one that has a very good objective Everybody understands what the objective is. The person leading the meeting or facilitating the meeting stays on track, makes sure that um, all parts of the agenda are covered, and once it's done, adjourn the meeting. So not too long, not too short. Yes. Okay. Shorter is better. (laughs) Now, what about the engagement of the audience. Uh, To me, that's always been the biggest challenge in whether I'm doing a training or a speech or uh, some kind of class. To get the audience engaged and to get them to participate is really, to me, the art of the meeting is is to make it a two-sided give and take of people. And But it's very, very challenging, especially for you and I, in this situation because we're Americans and we're in Vietnam teaching. So we have a different cultural context of both communication as, as well as delivering messages and, um, and goals. And so I'd like to know uh, from you, have you had to make any adjustments, for example, in your teaching in Vietnam as compared to the meetings and presentations that you would give in in your own country? When you talk about a classroom situation, uh, I try to stay focused on uh, transfer of information and making sure that the audience is understanding uh, the the points that I'm trying to get across. Sometimes there's less less interaction, well, less feedback, I would say, from from the classroom. And... uh, I can understand that sometimes that's a cultural thing, and we try to encourage um, feedback and more engagement, but my focus has always been on getting the information across, making sure the audience is appropriate. Well, that's, uh, that's very interesting because some speakers are more concerned with getting the information finished to completing their lecture. They're, they don't, it's almost like they don't have time to check in with the audience and make sure they're getting it or to go back and emphasize certain points. And when I have that sense, I kind of feel like I'm swimming in deep water, that it's, it's up to me, you know, to make this, uh, to make this uh, understandable. And I feel like I have to try to keep up rather than really focus on the content and the meaning of what they're doing. But can you give me an example of a bad meeting that you went to? I would say an an example of a bad meeting is where um, the person that has called the meeting, well, in a a corporate environment, quite often uh, some uh, manager or higher level executive will call a meeting and he expects everybody in the organization to attend. And uh, quite often, not everybody really needs to be in that meeting. But because that particular executive called the meeting, then everybody feels like they need to show up. But just showing up doesn't mean that that is a successful meeting. Mm. It's not, we don't count success by the number of attendees. It's whether or not the people there are appropriate for or the agenda of the meeting, for the content of the meeting. Uh, 
and then whether or not that information or the the objective of a, of the meeting is achieved. So I've been to a lot of those meetings, and the only thing that I can think, the only comment I would have about it is that it's really important to give feedback to the leadership of the meeting so that they understand that in your mind the meeting was a failure and they need to do better next time and, and what was missing for you. And I think that feedback loop, if, if you don't get the sense of it while you're in progress with the meeting, if you're too involved in delivering the message to pay attention to the receiver, then at least the, I think the only real thing that can happen to improve it is the receiver at the end has to give feedback that that could have been a lot better because, you know, after the second or third meeting and they're all the same, people just stop going or they just, you know, stop listening to something like that. Do you have an example of a great meeting that you went to? What's the best meeting you ever had and why? I don't know if I have any specific example of the best meeting, but um, meetings that I enjoy <clears throat> are ones where I know why I'm there exactly. I I understand what the agenda is. I understand what the obje- what uh, what the objective of the meeting is, and uh, I, I'm appropriate for that situation. And the the leader, or if there is a leader for the meeting, it might be just a roundtable discussion, uh, uh, but. Um, and that that person or those people um, know why they're there, and they they stay on track. That that to me is a good meeting. Now, some people are have seem to have natural ability. Their delivery, their their uh, control of the information, their level of understanding, and their connection with the audience. They're just good at it. You see some of them on TV, uh, these talk shows. But most of us. We have to learn these things because it's different than talking to your friends at, you know, at a restaurant. And especially when you have a specific inje- objective involved. But in terms of qualities of whoever the leader is, do they need to, what, what do they need to establish with the audience for the audience to take them seriously? I think when you see people that are very good at what they do and you think that maybe it just comes naturally, I think quite often that is very deceiving. I think it takes practice. It takes uh, thoughtful preparation in order to lead a good meeting. So again, we get to know your role and prepare. I think preparation uh, is underestimated. Okay. So there's two things that I look for when I conduct a meeting or I'm present in one. Let me know if if you would agree with this. One of them is, is the audience engaged? Are they participating? Are they enjoying their time? Is it a timeless event? Like, wow, that, that 40 minutes went really fast. So that's one of them is the sense of time. And the other is the transfer of information, which you talked about. You want to focus on, is there understanding in the audience of what the presenter is trying to give? So those are the two measures that I would use. Would you agree with those? And do you have any else, any others to add? Um, when you brought up the point about when you're engaged in a meeting and you feel like, oh, time has just gone by, like I'm really enjoying the meeting, I, I almost think of that as, as entertainment. And I don't, I don't really consider a meeting to be entertainment. I think more about um, reaching the objectives rather than, enjoyment, passage of time, I guess. That's really interesting. Um, and, and that's where that POV, that, that uh, a point of view really comes in. Your audience, is, your experience has been in a corporate science-based environment, science and sales. Mine has been different. Mine has been more in health science, communication, uh, behavior modification, and life skill related training. So my meetings tend to be very conversational. Yours tend to be more factually oriented. So the last thing I would like to know is about attention span. Typically in learning environments, we consider about 20 minutes to be the golden rule for learning new things, absorbing new knowledge. Of course, classes always go on longer than that, but really the peak learning experience is in about 20 minutes. So 
everybody has an attention span, especially for new learning. So how does a how does a good presenter, a good speaker, uh, or meeting leader keep the attention span going? Well, I think you need to break it up a little bit. So um, in the classroom, we often go for an hour, and that's a long time. And you're talking about twenty minutes, and I think twenty minutes. I think you're correct about the twenty minutes attention. So you need to, you know, break it up, uh, use, uh, maybe use some humor, use some stories. That's a, that's very important information. It, you know, sometimes the most basic stuff is the most important. And I've gotten a lot of good information from you in this session. And I want to thank you for, uh, for that. This concludes part two of our series. And thank you for listening to the AUV Academic Podcast. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much.